It was a warm yet cloudy spring morning, April 7, 1945. On the bridge of the Yamato, an engineering marvel and the largest battleship ever built, a radar operator diligently monitored the vast expanse of the Pacific. The Yahagi led the fleet, followed by a squadron of diverse destroyers, remnants of a once mighty naval force. The radar's blips suddenly shifted. The operator's trained eyes widened as the blips transformed into a cohesive strike force, an ominous sign of impending danger. Unbeknownst to the crew, the Yamato, a symbol of Japan's naval prowess, sailed into the crosshairs of an unfolding aerial assault. In the early 1930s, the military ambitions of the Japanese Empire, fueled by expansionist fervor veiled in secrecy, led to palpable unease among the world. As the rising sun of Imperial Japan ascended, so too did the specter of a strong naval force, poised to challenge the dominance of established powers. Behind closed doors, the Japanese naval general staff meticulously devised a blueprint for naval supremacy, foreseeing an inevitable clash with the United States. What followed was a sequence of clandestine machinations and the high-stakes pursuit of battleship superiority. In October 1934, the Japanese Naval General Staff tasked the Navy Technical Department with exploring the feasibility of building superior battleships. Despite acknowledging the United States' advantage in quantity, Japan aimed to surpass them in battleship power. Convinced of their capabilities, the Japanese government gave two years' notice of withdrawing from the Washington and London Naval Treaties. This marked Japan's rejection of restrictions on its naval armaments. Japan declared unilateral freedom from these treaties, allowing it to expand its naval force. The pinnacle of this new naval force, Yamato-class battleships, was approved in March 1937. The battleship specifications included a length of 263 meters, or 862 feet, a full load displacement of 70,527 tons, and a top speed of 27 knots. Its firepower was centered around 918.1-inch Type 94 naval guns, the largest naval artillery ever deployed, positioned in triple turrets. Despite lighter shells compared to British 18-inch naval guns of World War I, the Yamato's armor-piercing shells weighing 3,200 pounds each had a range exceeding 25 miles at 40-second intervals, unmatched by Western battleships. Additionally, the battleship featured a secondary armament of four triple turrets housing 6.1-inch guns. Extensive protective measures included 16.6-inch thick side belt armor and comprehensive radar systems. The battleship's ammunition showcased innovative anti-aircraft capabilities, exploding into fragments with a time delay fuse in comparison, the American Iowa-class battleships, with a length of 887 feet, displaced 45,000 tons and boasted a top speed of 33 knots. These vessels, epitomizing Japan's bid for superiority, boasted unparalleled armament and design. The first battleship, Yamato, commissioned in December 1941, was part of the intended five-ship class. However, only three were built. Musashi II was commissioned in August 1942. The third, Shinano, originally planned as a battleship, was converted into an aircraft carrier to compensate for losses at the Battle of Midway. Shinano was sunk by the American submarine Archerfish just 10 days into its maiden cruise. Despite completion, caution dictated their use, with reluctance from Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto who hesitated to engage the Yamato in battles. Even after Yamamoto's death in 1943, successors refrained from involving the Yamato and Musashi in significant combat until late in the war. The Yamato remained stationed at Truk Island, sparingly participating in actions. As the Americans approached the Philippines in October 1944, both battleships were committed to the Battle of Leyte Gulf. The Musashi succumbed to numerous strikes, 
losing 1,023 crew members while the Yamato endured minimal damage, escaping the battle. Following the defeat of the Japanese at Leyte Gulf and the American advance towards the central Japanese home islands, the invasion of Okinawa loomed on the horizon. The desperate situation prompted the Japanese to deploy their last resort, suicidal kamikaze attacks, including naval forces. Admiral Suemu Toyoda, against objections, authorized the deployment of the special attack force to defend Okinawa. The Yamato received orders to proceed to Okinawa on April 5th as part of this desperate countermeasure. The mission, named Ten Ichigo, required sailing directly into American ships, supporting the Okinawa landing to inflict maximum damage. The Yamato, once beached, would support Okinawa's land defense forces with its main batteries. The following day, the Japanese executed Operation Kikusui, launching waves of suicidal plane attacks on Allied Pacific Fleet ships. Despite orders for a one-way trip to Okinawa, harbor officials risked execution by fully refueling the vessels, providing more than enough oil for a potential return if any survived the mission. The mission would coincide with a massive kamikaze attack on the Allied Pacific Fleet. Every soldier was expected to sacrifice their life for the Empire. On the night of April 5th, the Yamato's crew, far from elation, was despondent as they prepared for the mission. Orders were issued to cadets to leave the ship, distribute to sake, and open the ship's store. Despite a ceremonial farewell, the atmosphere was somber, marked by unhappy songs and heavy drinking. The American forces, having intercepted Japanese radio transmissions, were aware of the impending naval operation. Admiral Raymond Spruance deployed submarines to intercept, but the Japanese fleet passed through the Bungo Strait unhindered. Approaching Admiral Mark Mitcher's Task Force 58, equipped with carriers and escort vessels, the Japanese fleet faced an imminent air assault. Mitcher directed his carrier task groups to strategic positions northeast of Okinawa with the aim to intercept and destroy the Yamato. On April 6, the Yahegi, accompanied by eight destroyers, set sail, with the Yamato bringing up the rear. Three commanders led the attack force, with Captain Kosaku Aruga commanding the Yamato, Vice Admiral Seiichi Ito overseeing the entire force, and Rear Admiral Keizu Kimura in charge of the 2nd Destroyer Squadron on the Yahagi. Yahagi was a relatively diminutive light cruiser in comparison to its US counterparts. It carried the hopes of a naval force bristling with the destructive power of its Type 93 Long Lance torpedoes. Accompanying Yahagi were eight destroyers drawn from the depleted ranks of the Japanese fleet. These destroyers, a mix and match of diverse classes and configurations, represented the attrition of 120 of its comrades throughout the war. As the force progressed, the Asashimo fell behind, hoisting an engine casualty signal. The crew on the Yahagi saw this as a foreboding omen as the destroyer fell astern of the main column advancing. At 10 a.m., the commencement of offensive operations unfolded as Task Group 58.1 and Task Group 58.3 orchestrated a coordinated aerial assault, unleashing a 280-plane strike wave comprised of 132 fighters, 50 bombers, and 98 torpedo planes. Rear Admiral Jocko Clark commanded Task Group 58.1 aboard Hornet, leading a composite force comprising Hancock, Bennington, Bellow Wood, and San Jacinto. Simultaneously, TG 58.3, commanded by Rear Admiral Frederick Sherman aboard Essex, marshaled the assets of Bunker Hill, with Mitcher on board Bataan and Cabot. Hancock, for reasons undisclosed, initiated a delayed launch of its 53-plane strike. This untimely departure resulted in the mission's failure to locate Yamato in the obscured conditions, reducing the overall first strike to a complement of 227 aircraft. By 1014, 
the Yamato force registered the presence of two Martin Mariner PBM flying boats and Hackleback trailing. Three minutes later, Yahagi initiated jamming procedures on the Mariner's communications. Yet this countermeasure proved futile as Yamato unleashed its main battery anti-aircraft shells, colloquially known as beehive shells, with a semblance to oversized shotgun projectiles. These efforts, however, proved ineffective as the Mariner aircraft adeptly evaded the assault, utilizing cloud cover to their advantage. One hour later, Yamato's radar detected American aircraft approaching them. Then, a radio signal arrived from the Asashimo. They were under attack. The first bombers launched their assaults against the helpless destroyer. She engaged enemy planes, but bombs and torpedoes caused critical damage. Within 10 minutes, she went silent, sinking with its entire crew of three 26 men. In anticipation of the impending assault, the Japanese aboard the ships observed a growing presence of US Navy aircraft, including Grumman F-6 F Hellcat fighters, Transvort F-4U Corsair fighters, Curtis SB-2 Sea Helldiver dive bombers, and Grumman TBF Avenger torpedo bombers. At 12.32, the first wave arrived, 43 Hellcat fighters. Yamato opened fire with her two forward main battery turrets. Guns roared as she launched her Sanshikiden shells. Then, the first aircraft attacked. Despite the strong armament of the Yamato, the American air assault proved highly effective. The Japanese anti-aircraft guns launched a barrage of fire. Initially assumed to be unparalleled, they failed to impede the agile maneuvers of the zigzagging American planes. The skies became a frenetic battleground as US aircraft initiated attack runs on the Japanese force. Fighters armed with strafing and rockets swiftly dismantled Japanese anti-aircraft defenses, exposing the vulnerability of their inaccurate fire. The real challenge, however, lay in the extraordinary evasive maneuvers executed by Japanese ship captains, proving far more effective in dodging bombs and torpedoes than the seemingly intimidating anti-aircraft barrage. It was a perilous dive towards the Yamato amidst a barrage of enemy fire. The sky was filled with colorful flak bursts and the planes faced the challenge of avoiding collisions in the crowded airspace. Despite the chaos, the American planes, jinking to evade gunfire, pressed on, dropping torpedoes from a mere 500 feet above the water. Helldivers from Bennington and Hornet orchestrated a coordinated assault from Yamato's port side, navigating through a storm of near misses. At 12.40, two 1,000-pound armor-piercing bombs found their mark. One detonated in the crew's quarters, while the other struck near the aft command station, inflicting significant damage and allowing water to flood in. The aftermath included the loss of an air search radar, the aft secondary gun director, multiple gun mounts, and a devastating fire that claimed most of the crew in the after secondary six-inch gun tub. The toll on the defending gunners was severe. In this onslaught, one Avenger and one Helldiver succumbed to enemy fire, while three torpedoes were launched. Evading two, Yamato was hit by the third, causing a rapid intake of 2,235 tons of water. Swift counter-flooding efforts, however, managed to restore balance. Meanwhile, the light cruiser Yahagi tried to divert attention away from Yamato. At 12.46, a direct torpedo hit in the engine room rendered her immobile, with the entire engine room crew succumbing. Attempts by the destroyer Isokazi to rescue Rear Admiral Kimura proved futile as she faced a barrage of bombs. Simultaneously, other Japanese destroyers fell victim to the relentless US assault, with Hamakaze disabled by subsequent torpedo hits, while Suzutsuki lost her bow to a 500-pound general-purpose bomb. Fuyutsuki, luckier, sustained damage from two dude rockets. She managed to retreat from the battle. As the clock approached 1250, the initial US attack wave subsided. As the dire situation unfolded, some sailors, 
realizing the futility of their mission, were left in the water, fearing no rescue due to their perceived status as part of a suicide force. The second wave, commencing 10 minutes later, orchestrated a coordinated strike with dive bombers and torpedo bombers from Essex and Bataan. This sustained attack caused additional damage to the Yamato, with at least two bombs and four torpedoes hitting the battleship. The ship took in about 3,000 tons of water and listed 18 degrees to port. Despite damage control efforts, many crew members drowned during the flooding. The ship's hull was severely damaged as sailors on board tried their best to fend off the swarms of airplanes. Facing imminent demise, reactions among the Yamato's crew varied. Some, accepting their fate, praised the skill and bravery of the Americans. Others defiantly cheered for the emperor, even as water rushed in. However, not all shared the realization of impending doom, with some manning an anti-aircraft battery, unable to fathom the sinking of the mighty Yamato. The relentless aerial assault continued, exploiting the battleship's size and leaving it battered from above and below by bombs and torpedoes. Finally, after sustaining many hits and being severely damaged, Hamakaze sank, losing 145 crewmen. The Japanese were powerless against the constant onslaught. American dive bombers delivered precise attacks, launching torpedoes and firing lethal machine gun rounds at anti-aircraft gun crews. At 13.30, 110 aircraft departed from Task Group 58.4, the Yorktown, Intrepid and Langley. This final assault sealed the Yamato's fate. The orders were to direct all attacks against the Yamato. With several hits rendering most guns inoperable, three torpedoes hit the hull in quick succession. One jammed the rudder and incapacitated the battleship. As crewmen faced drowning and the ship's inexorable roll to port, American planes showed no mercy. The suction created by the sinking battleship pulled swimmers into her propellers as bombs and torpedoes continued hitting the battleship. At 1405, the Yahagi sank after enduring 12 bombs and seven torpedoes. The desperate order to counter flood the starboard engineering spaces on the Yamato proved futile as the ship became ensnared in a starboard turn. Facing an increasingly dire situation, the executive officer relayed to Captain Aruga the grim news that damage control officers were casualties, rendering counter flooding ineffective in correcting the vessel's list. Faced with these stark realities, he recommended abandoning ship. The communication predicament was exacerbated by Yamato's radio equipment being rendered inoperable by the onslaught. In response, Vice Admiral Ito, utilizing flag hoists in the absence of functional radios, issued a signal cancelling the operation. This directive liberated the other ships to disengage from the battle. Torpedoes set at a depth of 20 feet struck the Yamato's starboard side, causing a series of explosions. By 1407, the US strike force reported at least eight torpedo hits, marking the death blow for the battleship, which was listing badly. Vice Admiral Ito retreated to his quarters to meet his end alone. Then, at 2.23 p.m., after several more hits, Yamato exploded with a mushroom cloud and massive fireball visible from more than four miles away. Its smoke reportedly was visible over 100 miles away. The battleship sank rapidly, resulting in the loss of about 3,055 crew members, with 117 wounded. Only 269 survived the ordeal. Yahagi lost 446 out of its 1,000 crew members, with Rear Admiral Kimura and Captain Hara among the survivors. The destroyer Asashimo sank with its entire complement of 330 crew members. Hamakaze met a somber fate, sinking with the loss of 100 crew members and 45 wounded. Hatsushimo, initially having three wounded on April 6th, struck a mine on July 20th, becoming the final Japanese destroyer sunk in the war. The American losses included 10 planes and 14 air crewmen, with three others injured. In less than two hours, the world's largest battleship met its destruction.
The sinking Yamato marked the end of the battleship era in naval warfare. The once mighty Imperial Japanese Navy had suffered a final defeat and the significance of battleships in modern naval conflicts had come to a close. Posthumously, Ito was promoted to full admiral and Aruga to vice admiral. The war would last for several more months until the United States used a secret weapon on the Japanese towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If there is a topic, battle or person you would like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also like to thank all my patrons and channel members for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and you want to support my work, consider joining me on Patreon. For just $1 per month, you will already gain early access to all my videos without any in-video advertisements. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.